We live by prayer. We survive by prayer. We conquer by prayer. There's a way to have what is called a, the, the state of a praying spirit. Where your spirit man is in a consistent posture of communion and contact with God. The state of a praying spirit. And you will not get that thing because you like prayer. You will get that thing by being deliberate in your prayer life. You will, you will discipline your flesh, discipline your mind. So you can, you can be in the office and your mind flies to the fact that there's no conflicts at home. But there's a yearning in your spirit to pray. You will have to call your mind from where it is. And bring it back and focus on the burdens that are being piped into your spirit. That thing takes time. It takes effort. It takes you being deliberate. It takes you prioritizing prayer. You will find that the average believer is very prayerful in the public. But personal prayer discipline, many Christians struggle. Because you will need to be deliberate. It's unnatural to you. To pray is unnatural. It's unnatural. To build that kind of consistency where you meet this requirement of praying always. You'll have to subdue your natural tendencies and latch on to something that is not natural to you. And that thing takes discipline. And that is where regimented praying now comes in. Because I said to us last week that regimented praying is not enough. But what regimented praying does for you is that it conditions your spirit, conditions your mind, so that you now learn the ways of prayer. So every Christian must have a regimented prayer life. I wake up at 12 to pray. I wake up at 2 to pray. I wake up at 1 to pray. And despite all odds, you determine that even if... I learned from E.M. Bounds that the only thing that should keep you from your prayer place is death. E.M. Bounds. He said the only thing that will ensure that you do not wake up to pray is that you are incapacitated or you are dead. Do you know what it means to be incapacitated? That you are paralyzed. Or you are lying on your hospital bed and they need to give you oxygen. You are, you are no longer in control of yourself. That's, that, that is the only way that you should have an excuse for not meeting up your requirement for prayer daily. So even when your body is telling you that you are tired, you remember that the posture, if I'm going to stand against the wiles of the enemy, is that my prayer must be what? Continuous. It was the day that David thought that it was a good day to rest. That was the day that Satan ensured that Bathsheba was in an open bathroom. Just that day that David decided that he needed to rest. Leonard Ravenhill said in his book, Why Revival Tarries, he said, rest to the Christian must be that if, when you are resting, it's not leisure. The rest for the believer, when you want to rest, you must rest in something that continues to build your spirit. Some of you lost your prayer life, lost your love for God, lost your commitment to God, lost your discipline because you say, Kai! Ah, 2022 was hectic spiritually. These two weeks, I just want to be watching movies. That's how you've entered into a state of carnality that no program can bring you out of now. You are dry. You are dying. And the death is so quick. You know, in the things of the spirit, it is easier to scatter. Scattering your spirit man can take one second. Building it can take two years. That's why some of us, we, we, we cannot afford to sleep into a state of carelessness because that one minute can mean that for the next five months you are trying to hear God your, your ear will become blocked you know that, that ear that you used to hear the newest housemate in the house is Tiana, that ear just becomes blocked you can't hear God again and it's not because God is wicked it's because these spiritual things are unnatural to the mortal the way to stay in that stream and in that, that realm and that environment is that you will discipline yourself to be continuous. And this is what the apostles passed on to their disciples. The Bible says, and they continued. That's how you survive. 
It's better that you can't meet your quota for the day than you miss it totally. It's better you get up and say, I normally pray three hours, but I did an hour 30 minutes. It's better than you miss it totally. Because you miss it today, you miss it tomorrow. When you now want to start on the third day, it will be like you have never prayed in your life before. So this recommendation is to ensure that there is no gateway for Satan. You are always alert. You are always sensitive. Things cannot take you unawares. Nothing takes you unawares. The reason we are crying that our generation does not know discernment is because our generation don't know how to pray always. Somebody who lives in an environment of continuous prayer, you can't take him on our ways. No, it's not possible. You will have a premonition. You will have a, you, you would have known that something is not right. You will know. It's because when you, when, you, when, you, when you live in an atmosphere of continuous prayer, you, even the environment in which you live will be conditioned by the environment that you are contacting. You will be overshadowed by what your, your entire environment will be overshadowed by what has overshadowed you. And you know the reason somebody like me is very deliberate about the things I talk about is I have read too many books. I have seen too many examples of men who have told us that these things are possible. Ha -ha. David Livingstone died on his knees. On his knees, he died. He was struck with malaria. You know in those days, if you come into, there was no cure for malaria. He was struck. So they carried him on a bed. He said he still needed to visit one of his disciples. So the the guys that were his assistants carried him on a bed on his chair. He couldn't walk. Oh. <laughs> so they carried him on a bed. You know you, just small headache. It becomes a, a, an excuse to the Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Ghost, you know the, the, the spirit is willing but, but I cannot come and die. They, ca they, carry, they carried him on his bed to go and visit. He didn't need to. He didn't need to. They carried him to go and visit. So when they brought him back from the visitation, he told the people who carried him on the bed, place me on my knees. He couldn't even kneel down by himself anymore. But he looked at the time and it was his prayer time. He said, place me on my knees. He needed to commune with God. So they arranged him. They packaged him. He didn't even have strength to kneel down again, but that one did not stop him. He unbound said, only death. They packaged him, put him on his knees. And he bent his head and began to pray. So the guys waited one hour, two hours. He was still on his knees. They said, something is wrong. That's when they came and they broke the door and checked. He had died on his knees. Livingstone didn't die. His spirit changed location. He just transited. That's how you survive the wiles of the enemy. That's how you galvanize the armor. Praying always. The second thing there is that when you pray always,